The motivation for cat is cheap. You will feel pumped up for 2-3 days and then it will fizzle out. It's useless. What's permanent is you sitting here solving 10 questions of cat with us and look. Easy questions start appearing hard. We have 8 to the power f equal to 9. We see that 8 is equal to 7 to the power e. So this part can be replaced with 7 to the power e. You might see a pattern. This 7 is the same as 6 to the power d. Now this 6 is the same as 5 to the power c. 5 is same as 4 to the power b. 4 is same as 3 to the power a. So 3 to the power a, b, c, d, e, f equals 9, which is nothing but 3 to the power 2. a, b, c, d, e, f equals 2. Also, we have a forum. Ask questions completely free. The number of all positive integers up to 500 with non-repeating digits is. So if I have a single digit number, I can have 1 to 9. I cannot put a 0 because the question says positive integers. I have 9 cases. Now let's look at two digit numbers. I have a tens place and I have a unit place. In the tens place, I cannot put a 0. It needs to be 1 to 9. But in the case of unit digit, I can definitely put a 0, 0 to 9. So I have 10 cases, but it cannot be repeated. So I'll have to subtract one case from the total. So overall, I have 81 cases. Now let's look at three digit numbers. In the hundreds place, I need a number that is up to 500. Can 500 be a number? No, zero is repeating. So in the hundreds place, I can put one, two, three, four. So I have only four options there. In the tens place, I can put zero to nine. I have 10 options, but I'll be using one of the numbers in the hundreds place. In the units place, I have again 10 options, but I'll have to subtract two. One is the number in the hundreds place, one is the number in the tens place. So four into nine into eight, which is 288. Now, if you add, you get 378, which is your correct answer. Many got this long in cat. Can you get it right? If a to the power m, b to the power n, equal to 144 to the power 145, what is the largest possible value of n minus m? So n has to be the greatest and m has to be the least. 144 can be written as 16 into 9. Let's simplify this. We have 2 to the power 580 into 3 to the power 290. So this can be in the form of a to the power m into b to the power n. I did this because we know n has to be the greatest and 580 here is the greatest, hence I put b to the power n here. Many students are going to do 580 minus 290 equal to 290 and mark it as the answer. And that is where you make mistakes. This entire thing to the power 1 can be put. So a is equal to 3 to the power 290 and m is equal to 1. So technically, you can do 580 minus 1 and get 579 as your answer. For any natural number m, n, and k, such that k divides both m plus 2n and 3m plus 4n, k must be a common divisor of four options. The question tells us that k divides these two things. We do not know what k is. Let me just assume values. Let m equal to 2 and n equal to 3. So the first one becomes 2 plus 6, which is 8, and the second one, 6 plus plus 12, which is 18. So k divides 8 and 18. So it can either be 1 or it can be 2. And 1 anyways divides everything. So the value of k is 2. We have these options and k divides both the terms in each option. We know that n equal to 3. So if I have this as 3, k cannot divide it. So these two options can be put in the trash. Looking at option 1, 2m gives us 4 and 3n gives us 9. K cannot divide 9. So this is also eliminated. So we have m equal to 2 and 2n equal to 6 and k can divide it. Hence our correct answer. <laughs> Day 5 of solving can't be like and I realized you do not suck at math. You're just lazy. If x and y are positive real numbers such as log x squared plus 12 base x equals to 4 and 3 log x base y equals to 1, what is the value of x plus y? This states that x to the power 4 equals x squared plus 12. We arrange it. This looks like a quadratic equation. Let me put y equal to x squared. If I split the middle term, I'll get minus 4y and plus 3y. 
So y becomes 4 and minus 3. We know that y is equal to x square. A square cannot be minus 3. So x can be plus or minus 2. Over here, I need a positive number. So x will be equal to plus 2. 3 log 2 base y equal to 1. Let me blink 3 on top. I get log 8 base y equal to 1, which means y equals 8. So x is 2, y is 8, and if I add them up, I get 10. And that is my answer. If you're not able to solve this cat PYP, that means you just need practice, man. So let's do it. If this plus this equals 3 into 2 plus root 2, then what is the value of root of 10x plus 9? Okay, let me expand this. I get 6 plus 3 root 2. I have a root being added to another root. Can I make this into a root and add it to another root? I can. 6 is root of 36. And this can be said to be root of 2 into 9, which is nothing but 18. Now, can I say that this thing is equal to this thing and this thing is equal to this thing? Now, can I say that these are equal? If yes, let me try to derive the value of x. So 5x minus 9 equals to 18, 5x equals to 27, and x equals to 27 by 5. We need to find the value of this. Just plug the value of x. We can cancel this out and we get root of 63. Root of 63 can be written as root of 9 into 7. Root of 9 is 3. So your final answer is 3 into root of 7. If you see a modulus question, open it once in positive, open it once in negative, and then aag ban ke solve kolo, okay, aag khol ke solve kolo, and answer mil jayega, I promise. Now let us do x greater than 0. So I get 2x, x square plus 1 equals 5x square. I can cancel this x and one of these x. So 2x square plus 2 equal to 5x. So this is a quadratic equation. And when you solve it, you will get x equal to 0 0.5 and x equal to 2. Similarly, take x less than 0. And now you get two more values. If you look at this and put x equal to 0, you're going to get both sides as 0 equal to 0. So 0 can also be an answer. So always test for that once. So x can be equal to 0. Question asks us the number of integer solutions. Integer solutions means decimals nahi hona chahiye. So this is an integer solution, this is an integer solution, and this is an integer solution. Two, three, we have three integer solutions. <laughs> Log x base root 3 plus this thing is equal to 16 by 3. Square root of 3 can be written as 3 to the power half. Any exponent on a base can be brought to the denominator. The fraction in the denominator will be a reciprocal in the numerator. Now, 25 is nothing but 5 to the power 2. And we have decimals over here. It probably might be 5 to the power minus 1, 5 to the power minus 2, 5 to the power minus 3. And just put this in the calculator and check. 5 to the power minus 3 is 1 by 125, which then becomes 0 0.008. In a fraction like this, we can rewrite this entire thing as minus 2 by 3. Sending this to the right hand side, 18 by 3 is nothing but 6. And over here, 2 can get cancelled and 6 becomes a 3. And we finally have 3 to the power 3 equals x. The question asks us to find the value of log 3x square base 3. Let's substitute this x with 3 to the power 3. When we have powers like this, we can just multiply them. And finally, we have log 3 to the power 7 base 3. The final answer is 7. Ratio of the average salary obtained by the manufacturing employees to the average salary obtained by the non-manufacturing employees S. So I have M and NM. For the average salary, I need the total salary and the number of people. If I divide it, I get my average. If the total salary obtained by the manufacturing employees is one-sixth of the total salary, so imagine there are six parts. So one part goes to manufacturing employees and the remaining five parts goes to non-manufacturing employees. In a company, 20% of the employees work in the manufacturing department. So 20% work here and 80% work in the non-manufacturing. And that is nothing but 1 is to 4. Now we can convert both these ratios into an equation. So for salary, I have 1x, 5x. Number of people, I have 1y, 4y. To find the average, I just divide it. I have x by y is to 5x by 4y. I can cancel x and y on both the sides and I end up with 1 is to 5 by 4. If I multiply both the sides by 4, I have 4 is to 5. The price 
of a precious stone is directly proportionate to the square of the weight. Theta has a precious stone weighing 18 units. If I want to convert this into an equation, I put a constant over here. If she breaks this 18 gram gem, so she can have the highest cost and the lowest cost if I break it in four different pieces. If I want the highest cost, I would want one of the weights to be as big as possible and the remaining to be as small as possible because I'm working with scratch. Let me just try putting one, two, and three. So I already have six grams here. 18 minus six is 12 grams. If I add all these squares, I get 158K. In comparison, 18 square was 324. If I want the lowest value of the sum of all the squares, I would not want to keep a very high number over here. So if I have 18 and if I divide that by 4, I get 4.5. So if that is my average, I can say that this can be 4, this can be 5, this can be 3, and this can be 6. Now the sum of these squares end up to be 86k. Now the difference between the highest and the lowest possible weight is 2,88,000. This gives us 72k, hence k equals 4,000. We want to know the value of the original stone, 12,96,000. One thing that was missing in our calculation was being an organized community for all the doubts being solved, not just WhatsApp where everything is, you know, half a you will love after plan.